soon. Now, as soon as we get rolling, Ralph and Colleen are going to come over and the dog's going to go nuts. Probably. You going to get big mad. No, it's the magic of editing. I've, I've, we've moved past the, we're going to do everything in one shot and sometimes we have to cut things out and that's okay. And it's not because we're trying to withhold information. It's because dogs barked more than likely. Reality, real life. So lots of, lots of animals downstairs. This is very true. So we are back with another podcast and I think we're going to do a cash podcast today. A cash, a little cash a podcast, a cash pod. I feel like you're close. You're, you're closer than I am. There you go. Well, you go. I, I have the drawers on my side. So I know, I but just like ignore it. Like you see how I'm in line with this right here behind us, and for those that are oh old, no, like, I just know. Never mind. This is the Jordan Peterson poster. Never mind. Right. The Jordan. Well, the Jordan Peterson poster is the. He should be in the middle of us, don't you think? It, <laughs> so it'll be like Jordan Peterson's with us. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Exactly. Um, so we're basically making a podcast because we have to put out a podcast because I told myself that we were going to do this podcast and we're going to do it every week, and. I'm I'm just going to say that most of the time it's going to be you and me. And this is basically our podcast. It's fine. I don't mind. They're fun. And sometimes we're going to have other people on, like Tony. People love Tony. Tony. He's the best. Tony. I love that kid. Um, as you may notice, we're at a desk today. Oh, well, if you're listening on audio, you're not, like, you don't see that. But uh, we're at a desk today. And I think we're going to be at a desk moving forward because it's cool. Yeah. I like the desk. Yeah. I can me wear too. sweatpants and not, like, not, people won't know. Yeah. I'm not wearing anything. <laughs> I am completely naked right now. We weren't going to tell the people. So, and this is the problem that I've had with the last few podcasts is I've had the burden of having to put on socks. <laughs> and if you know anything about me, you know that I hate having things on my feet. Always barefoot. I'm always barefoot. I am a barefoot. I've always been the barefoot kid. And Colleen just laughed. So that's all right. <laughs> Cool. Anyway, so I've always been the barefoot kid and the first two podcasts that we had, uh, I had to stop. We had to stop recording because I realized that my feet were showing and I wasn't going to do that to you guys. Mm. And so not, not without pain. Right. I had to, <laughs> only feet. Only feet. So I had to put the, uh, the socks on and I don't like wearing the socks. So that's why we're at a desk today. It is solely because I don't want to wear shoes or I don't want to wear socks. It works. Uh, so today we're going to talk about a few things I put on my Instagram. I said, Hey folks, didn't say, Hey folks, but I said, Hey, we're going to record a podcast this weekend. What do you want us to talk about? And the one that somebody said, which was 75 hard, we just completed 75 hard, uh, yesterday. Wee. Very excited mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. We're taking two somewhat different approaches moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, Shana had some Cadbury mini eggs this morning. <laughs> you sabotaged me. I didn't even think about them until you threw the bag at me. Literally, you woke up and threw the bag at me. I was like, you sabotaged me. Well, you've been waiting for them for a while. You were very patient. You Easter. almost you almost quit. I, I was, yeah. I would never have done that, but I was like... Just to have Cadbury mini eggs. Oh, they're so good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just like enjoying my day. That's but like fine. I've I've known from the past that I got to limit myself because otherwise I'm just going to end up back where I was. So I need to need to find a plan. It's all right. And I have a feeling I'm not going to last much longer with you doing phase one and me not. So I'll probably jump on the bandwagon and like. Hey, look at me being a twenty four hours. Look at me setting an example. Well, I can't let you get better and let me not. That ain't. That's not how this works. Hundred percent. Should I be talking louder? I feel like I should. I talk a lot quieter than you. I do. I do project my voice quite well, a bit. You're good. you're used to being. Yeah. My sound. Look at look at the difference between my sound yeah, waves and your sound waves. That's what made me think of it because I looked at the sound waves and I was like, I'm like talking like this, and he's like talking like this. Yeah. Now they're the same. <laughs> Maybe I should quiet down. No, you have a good voice. So uh, let's talk about first of all what 75 hard is because some people watching this don't understand what that is. So. It's a program created by Andy Frisella. Andy Frisella is the founder and CEO of First Form. Uh, do we have anything First Form? Oh, yeah, we have the First Form energy drinks back there. We support First Form. Um, and the American flag was a gift from First Form because they're the coolest. That's right. That's hand-carved right. Hand-carved wedding gift. This American flag right here is a wooden American flag that says... Um, Shana and Matt Graham, one our wedding date. And they wrote like, this beautiful card... 
I was trying to get you to keep your oh, mouth sorry, facing the microphone. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But yeah, they're just the best company on the planet. So, yeah, anyway, uh, the program was created by Andy Frisella, and it's very simple. It goes like this. You have two 45-minute work- workouts every single day, and you have to drink a gallon of water, and you have to read 10 pages of a nonfiction personal development business book, and you have to take a progress photo every single day. One of the workouts has to be outside. Did I say that already? And what am I missing here? No yep. cheats. No cheat meals. You got to follow it. You got to follow a diet. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we've been doing the last 75 days. This is our third go around. Well, I mean, we've attempted it plenty of times, yeah. but we've completed third completion. it. completion. Completed it three times. I'm pretty sure we've completed it four times, but one time we don't really count. It was kind of. Yeah. The one time we did it like way in the beginning, which I guess it counts if you were to like think about the timing of it, but the, the rules weren't as clear. So we were a little bit more lenient, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Now, but now, now. At this point, who cares? <laughs> right now, my boundaries are super, yeah, super, super uh, clear. So, uh, yeah, w- what was your? Do you have a positive experience the seventy five hard? A positive experience. I mean, I just feel better when I'm doing it. Yeah, just like- being on a program. I'm one of those people where if I give myself an inch, I'll take a mile. So if I and I'm just like so. I'm one of those people when I eat, like I just eat, 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 eat. Like I just love, I just don't have an off button essentially. So when you're in a program like this, you're kind of forced to like, you know, kick that discipline into gear. And I just feel better. That's like my overall always every single time. It has nothing to do with weight loss or whatever. It's truly a mental program. There are much easier ways to lose weight. 75 hard, I don't recommend doing it to get skinny or whatever. Um, I mean, it works for that too. Yeah. It's just a byproduct of the point of the program, which is to, to chisel your mind. Correct. Yeah. It's much more of a fitness program for the mind than it is a fitness program for the body. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think it does that I really appreciate is that it forces you to accomplish a certain set of tasks every single day that nobody forces you to do. You, you force yourself to do them. Mm -hmm. And this is where so many people don't get anywhere is because they create wiggle room for themselves and they don't get certain tasks done. And you can't do that on 75 hard. If you, if you drink one ounce few, fewer, less of, of water than, than a gallon, then you have to go back to day one. If you do a 44 minute workout instead of a 45 minute workout, you have to go back to day one. If you miss one progress photo, you have to go back to day one. Mm -hmm. And that sort of rigidity, that sort of uh, structure is so important for people. And it allows people to stack wins because you have to do it in a row. You can't just do 75 days of the program. You have to do 75 days in a row of the program. So it's much it's much more about building momentum and stacking wins than anything else. And that's where so many people screw up. So this is why it's important, the mental aspect of it, because I would argue that since completing 75 hard, we haven't viewed the world in the same way. No. Like we, my brain is a totally different brain than it was than the first time that we actually completed it. And I mentioned this in the last podcast we did, uh, that 75 hard forces you to fall in love with the process and it forces you to fall in love with the actions. And the reason you fall in love with it is not because you have sort of in fat, some sort of infatuation towards the actions themselves, but you fall in love with the momentum that, doing the things you say you're going to do creates Mm -hmm. you fall in love with the feeling of accomplishment of doing exactly what you set out to do every single day and watching that build up over time and how that how that compounds over time and where you end up over the course of 75 days and it it, it's going to manifest itself in all different areas of life like you, you you understand the power of just simply doing what you say you're going to do That's it. That's it. That's where so many people fail. And that's where so many millionaires are made. So many billionaires are made. So many, uh, you know, uh, six packs are made. So many PRs are made. Like all these things, they boil down to these small daily actions that you have to take that so few are willing to take on, on such a consistent basis with such rigidity and such discipline that they just live this like up and down yo-yo style life. 
and again, you can't do that on 75 hard. Sure, it yo-yos and it goes up and down in terms of like the day-to-day experience. Like some days you have good workouts, some days you have bad workouts, but no matter what, you're getting the things done. And there's a lot of power and a lot of magic in that uh, that you just don't get with other programs because they don't have the the rigidity to them and they don't have the structure to them. And, and you allow... There's too much, room. right. There's too much wiggle room and everything. It's in our culture. It's in our society. It's in our day to days. It's in our, everyone's in mindset. We cut so many corners in so much of our lives that we cut them so often that we don't even know we're doing it anymore. Like we've, 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 we've mini- minimized the quality of so much that we do and that we expect of ourselves that 75 hard doesn't allow for that at all. Like it's a set of rules and each rule is designed to make you better and make you uncomfortable. That's the point. It's not supposed to be an easy outdoor walk in hundred degrees. It's not supposed to be easy, you know, forcing yourself to get up at nine o'clock at night to finish your 45 minute, you know, weightlifting program. Um, that's the point, you know, and there's no, there's no skimming it. You know, you, you, you do 43 and a half minutes of a workout. That's not it. That's, that's not 45 minutes day one, like, you know? So when it, it forces you to look at everything you do through a lens that I've personally never had before. Like I never knew that I, I had a lens like that, but when you do a program like this, it forces you to look, look for those things and those weaknesses. And then what's on the other side of that is you now know what you're capable of. And that's the really neat thing. And something that back to, you know, our brains not being the same after we completed it is excuses. Like you do a, you do a rigid, tough mental program like this. You won't accept an excuse ever again a day in your life. And it's so neat to watch because yes, we'll, we have excuses, but instead of believing our excuses, we know it's just an excuse. So we're not like lying to ourselves. It's like, did I need to eat the flips pretzels downstairs like I could have said oh I haven't had chocolate in so long like I just need it it's like well no like you didn't need it like I I chose to do that so if my results from the last 75 days if I continue to eat like crap for the next 30 days I'm going to then lose the progress that I made and I know that now because I've now taken accountability for my actions and don't accept excuses anymore so that's been the the coolest and almost worst part because now like it kind of brings your brain to like a different level so in life like in, with your coworkers, friends family whoever like excuses now just like make your skin crawl it's like you can you can pick out the lies that we tell ourselves so much more clearly now which yeah is an and you can see that you can see the lies that everyone tells themselves and you yeah, know and you know it's tough and, and you can't call everyone on their bullshit every single time yeah. that they that they say something and you become the you become that that right. guy. No one wants to be around a person like that. Right. So it's and, it, and it's a challenging thing because you do see people making excuses and you do see people f- foregoing all this control that they have over their lives and, yeah. and just giving up in so many different ways. And to actually to actually like hold them accountable would be to like just be on their ass every single day. And like you just can't for your sake and their sake, you just can't. Yeah. Do that. It's a, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough, tough mindset to well, keep for yourself, but then like put like pause for other people. Cause you know, you can't force everybody to do, right. you know, it's like, you got to just kind of take a back seat on it, but it does, it, it is a tough, well, I remember, I remember when we first really finished it, like really crushed a, a true round of 75 hard. And, and we talked about that, like, man, like I can't take excuses anymore. Like I can't hear them from other people. I can't take them from myself. Like it's an interesting um, side effect of, of doing a program like this. Yeah, and this is why I would say if I could wave a magic wand oh. and have everyone do 75 hard, I would because, Same. you know, people's minds are, su- are wired in such a way that like they don't see it. Like the, what, what we see in other people, what we see in ourselves, they don't see it at all. And 75 hard is the only program that I've found that actually shows it to you Mm -hmm. that actually like proves all of your mental wiring wrong. And it's like, Oh, like I do have more. Oh, like that was just an excuse. Oh, like look what happens when I just do all these things that everyone my whole life has been telling me to do. But for some reason I call, I think it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's not bullshit. All, All the cliches are cliches for a reason, you know? And people just, 
people just brush them off and act like it's nothing. But once you experience it, you're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. It's so true. It's, and I, it's that's I was that person. I never thought I'd I'd have a small midsection or like I could I could get thin in my stomach because that's where my body tends to hold on to. I never I just didn't I thought it was genetics to me. Oh, I'll never look like that. I don't have small hips I, or I don't have like curves. I don't have a small waist, whatever it was. Like I, I wholeheartedly believed that. Like you know I just chalked it up. Well, my arms are kind of skinny and my legs are kind of skinny and like that's just the way my life is now. And then you you work hard for seventy five days. And again, this isn't about the physical aspect of it, but this is just an example. Like I, I, I achieved those results and like it really just comes down to discipline and doing what you're supposed to do, which is what everybody tells, like everyone tells you to do. Like all these weight loss people and fitness people, like they just tell you to eat well, move your body and like be consistent. And that's literally all it takes. And then you force yourself to do that for 75 days because you have to or you fail. And then you're like, you look in the mirror one day and you're like, whoa, like this has worked for me oh so I could do this too like and it just un, it just like unlocks a level of yourself that you didn't know you had and it's just like such a freeing and this bleeds into everything it bleeds into your job your relationships like how you talk to yourself what you think of yourself what you're capable of like it's just it's like he said like I, if I could wave a, a magic wand and have everyone in the world do 75 hard and not 75 soft or whatever this weird stuff that's going around the world oh it makes me crazy um, but yeah, it's just, it's amazing. I, I can't recommend it enough to people for sure. Now, when we talk about times that we've completed 75 hard, but didn't really complete it, what do we mean by that? Right? Because what's the difference between checking the boxes every day and doing the program? What's right. the difference? It's the integrity and the actual, like actually doing it. Like, like those like no cutting corners like yes you weigh out every grain of rice that you put in your bowl for your for your burger bowl that night like you don't just meh meh this looks good yeah this has some protein in it this should this is healthy enough like you you do every single detail to a t and let me tell you the 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 round that we did that in because I had a specific diet that round was the round where my results were unbelievable. That was the round that changed everything for me. The one prior to that, we were crushing it. We were doing CrossFit. We were doing great. Like we were, we were doing the program, but man, like when you really, when you reel it in and you, you set yourself that goal on day one and you do not stray from that, like that's doing the program. Like, and, and you know the difference. Yeah. Cause there would be days where there'd be several days where we would do like you know, two walks outside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with no resistance, yeah, nothing, just like, just to, just to go through the motions. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of the difference here, right? Like, obviously there are some things that you don't like get super intense about. You don't take a super intense picture. You don't drink a super intense amount of water. Right. But like when it comes to the workouts and the diet, that's something that there's a lot of flexibility with, there's a lot of wiggle room with, and that's where the most questions come up of like, does this count? Mm -hmm. And those are the most annoying questions because yeah. I hate to be the 75 hard snob. That's like, mm -hmm. no, that doesn't yeah. count. Sorry. Golf is not a workout. Sorry. Me doing the palm trees today, trimming the palm trees is not an outdoor workout. It's extra. It's, it's, it's strenuous. It's manual labor, but it's not a workout. And so People don't like to hear that. People don't like to hear that. When I, when, when, when I tell somebody that, no, you doing a 10 mile run, wherein the first five miles was your first workout and the second five miles was your, was your second workout. That's not two workouts. That's this, that's one workout. You have to do another one. Yeah. People it's all don't like the that. details. It's all in the details and following the rules to a T and not bending them, not cutting corners, not justifying this decision. And our favorite thing to do is like, if we ask like, does this count or would this be cheating? If we have to ask that question, then we already know the answer. It's mm -hmm. like, if, can we eat this? If we're questioning it, we're not eating it. Like that's just the way that it is. And again, like people to hear this program and they think that it's just crazy and why would you do that to yourself and you're going to be so miserable and all this stuff and it's just it's honestly so heartbreaking to hear people say that because it's like you are it's there on the far side of this program and and, and doing something really hard for this amount of time on the far side of that is like like I said you unlock a version of yourself that just like levels you up in your whole life and it just I hate that people that people just 
rob themselves of that because they they see something hard and they're like that's crazy I could never oh my god I wouldn't two workouts I can't have any like I can't have a drink I can't have alcohol like I could never do that it's like it's like you could do it you could do it if you wanted it bad enough and it just breaks my heart to hear people just completely knock it off the bat without even truly considering it because that's when you know like I have people in my life who be like I'm gonna try 75 hard on Monday it's like girl I'm like if you're if you're gonna try 75 hard you ain't doing it like you're gonna make it you're gonna make it 26 days in and you're just gonna forget you're just gonna you're just gonna fail you you're doing 75 hard day one your intention is everything mm -hmm. and it's I just it's such a bummer to see people shortchange themselves just right off the bat because it's gonna be hard it's like you know, it's like when you really break it down and we talk about this a lot, too, because we've completed it a couple of times. It's like people like this to say it's so intense and it's like it's crazy and you could never sustain this and it's not sustainable. It's not this. It's like to me, it's like it kind of feels sustainable. Like, you know, we walk outside 45 minutes a day with a 20 pound vest. Yep. And then we like lift weights for 45 minutes. Like that's not it's not crazy. that's an it's hour and a half of your debt. Right math yeah hour and a half of your day and then like just eat well like don't eat junk like eat you know food that's good for your body that fuels your body that will keep you around longer in life alcohol was a really interesting point of it because like I, I was never a big drinker but we like to drink like at the pool and whatever on the weekends and then like you learn like it's just not appealing like at all like I hate the way I feel on it like yeah the buzz is kind of fun because it makes you funny and loopy and like you're laughing and having a good time but like it just it just it's horrible for your body it's straight up poison and then it's like i could just do without it like i don't i don't maybe every now and then like i'll crave like an old-fashioned or something but um i don't know it's just it's it feels very doable like very sustainable you know totally is it totally it, is it's just we as a society like we just we 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 put food like pleasure food like like junk and desserts and peat and whatever like over like our quality of life like that we choose that over feeling better losing weight being healthier and it's like that's the that's the priorities that we we set for ourselves it's like why like well, how did we get here it's just so interesting yeah and you said something that i found interesting you said um people call us miserable that we're going to be miserable yeah. doing the program it's like no like you you don't understand the type of joy, the type of relief, the type of uh, pride, for lack of a better term, confidence that comes with doing difficult things. There is so much reward that comes with doing something that's challenging for you. And People think people, their idea of happiness, their idea of pleasure, their, their idea of joy is like comfort. It's like, that's cool for a day. Mm -hmm. But when that's your lifestyle, are you happy? Are you, are you happy sitting on the couch? Are you happy with your long list of achievements that is zero items long? Are you happy with that? Are you happy knowing that, you, that I'm doing something that you can't? Does that make you happy? People think that rigidity and structure and not allowing yourself to do certain things makes you miserable. It's, it has the exact opposite effect. Mm -hmm. It makes you happier. It makes you more proud of yourself. It makes you feel like you're, you're, you're capable. People, th and, and this is a much broader conversation about happiness versus other things to, to look for in life. It's like the, the, I'm, I don't know what to call it, but purpose, like uh, the purpose of life, so to speak, is progress. It is being better today than you were tomorrow, than you were yesterday, not tomorrow. <laughs> that's, that's the opposite. <laughs> so much, if you just look at human history, so much of humanity has just been about progress, building society. We didn't get here if humans didn't care about progress. We don't have this light. We don't have these microphones. You're not watching this video. You're not listening to this podcast if humans didn't care about progress. But for some reason in our lifetime, humans don't care about progress. They don't care. They care about happiness. They care yeah, about pleasure. We're not forced to. We're, we, we are fortunate enough to live in a, the only time in the history of the world where 
we can be comfortable and survive pretty dang well. We well, they talk we, about they talk about progress, right? Mm, in, right. Di- in different different ways that we that we're yeah. not a fan of. So it's just uh, it's just an interesting. It's just an interesting uh, when you, when you are on the other side of the, that lens and, and you look and you like hear people's responses. It's just like, dang, like it's just a bummer, you know. And the, and again, it's a really hard line of straddling of like you want to pass on this knowledge that you've you've earned and learned from from all the work that you've put in to people that you love and care about because you now know how much different their quality of life can be and how much more control and pride they could take over their day to days. Um, versus like being bossy and a know-it-all and putting yourself on a pedestal. And now you're above people. And it's like, you, it's not where, especially finishing something like this, like you don't, that's not where you're at at all. You just, you've just dropped a different lens in front of you. And now it's like, oh, I get it now. So it's really hard to, um, to, to balance that for sure. Yeah. I don't feel better than anyone else no. for having completed Mm-mm. 75 hard. No. I just have the awareness now that everyone can, complete 75 hard that everyone can see what I see that if I'm able to do it, everyone else is able to do it. And where people think that they think I'm better than them is in like that fact of like knowing that you can be so much more, you can do so much more. And that's not to say like, look at me, I can do so much. I'm doing more than you. It's, it's, you're not even scratching the surface of your potential. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the lifestyle that I see people living is horrendous. It's absolutely horrendous. They're not doing anything, anything. I look at some of the highest performers that I know personally and we follow on online. The people, a lot of the people that I know personally and, and I, I just observe in, in real life, watching their lifestyle, they couldn't last a day in Andy Frisella's shoes, Mm -mm. in Joel's shoes, Mm -mm. and probably in my shoes or your shoes. Yeah. They could if they did the work to work themselves up to that. And and the problem is, is they, they know that and they believe that and they believe they're confined to that. Yeah. Just that's because just you can't step who in. They are. That's just what they, that's just, that's who just they the are. way it is. That's how I am. I could never do that. I could, I was that person. I always felt that way. I truly just felt like you were just plopped into the planet, the, the universe, the way that you are. And like, this is, this is your roadmap. And then it's like, then you force yourself to be really uncomfortable for a long period of time doing things you don't, don't think you can do, but you know, your fiance or your friend or whoever is doing it with you. So you just, you just go all in on it. And then one day you look around and you're like, holy crap, like we're in way more control than we think we are. Like, and, and it's so easy to look at the Andy Frisellas and the David Goggins of the world and Joe Rogan's and Jocko Willinks and think like, oh, they got lucky. Like, oh, they got good genetics. Their, like, their oh, brains wired yeah. differently. It's like, it's, it's, it's so, and that's what I mean when I say like, it's so rewarding to know you are in control. It's so rewarding. So it's just, it's a totally different, it's a piece. It's a, it's the most important tool that you could have in your belt. In my opinion, it forces extreme ownership. It, it forces you to take accountability for everything you do, everything you do. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you you're in control of your life. Like you're not a victim of anything anymore. And there's, there's no greater freedom than that for me. And, and again, this is just a a, a program that some guy made with his buddies, like as kind of like a bet. And then he did it. And then he just threw it out on the internet because he he saw what it did for himself and it's changed people's lives. And I know we're having like a really deep like conversation about life right now, but it's wild to see like, like the connection between the two. And, um, I'm just forever grateful for it. Cause it's, if I'm going to, you know, cause even having done 75 hard, we're still human. We still go through ups and downs and, you know, life gets tough and you fall into ruts again. And like, this is one of those programs that I will have forever that I will always be able to start up when I need to get, kick myself in the butt and, you know, hopefully make our, our not make, but, you know, include w- with our future family and just like, just a way to just help people better themselves. And I'm just forever grateful oh, for yeah. it. Cause yeah. My, my kids will be doing 75 hard read, before they get any affection. I read all. in the 75 hard group on Facebook, which there's only one now because Andy like dropped the hammer on that. Cause there was all these trash groups being like 75 medium. And like, I only drink 19 ounces of water today. But a family, a guy posted that his wife and kids are doing it. And, you know, 12-year-olds can't house a gallon of water. Eight-year-olds can't drink a gallon of water. So they have, like, little, um, you know, 
things that they'll change for the kids, but they're all doing it together as a family. The kids read 10 pages of a book every single day, like a, like a learning book. Um, for school or whatever it is. And like the whole family's freaking doing it together. And obviously the parents have like the real rules. But I'm like, that's the coolest thing ever. I've seen moms with their 16 year old girls, um, you know, depressed. They got dumped. They're so depressed. They won't leave their room. They make them do 75 hard with them. And they're outside every day. They're talking to their parents more. They're more involved. They're, they're not on their phones as much. They're reading books now. It's like, it's the coolest thing to watch. Now, think about this. And this is how this is how my mind. If you want to know how my mind works, you're about to watch it in real time. Buckle up, kids. <laughs> I don't know what's coming, but you it's just coming. told me that children are doing 75 hard, right? Now think about. Okay, they're doing. They're reading books. They're they're not on their phones. They're working out. They're doing all these things, right? That's fine for 75 days. Cool, but stack that up over the next 10 years, when those kids are 21. What right? an advantage, man. Imagine the progress that they're going to make in those 10 years if they keep it up versus everyone else who's got their face buried in their phone. They haven't eaten a, they haven't eaten a vitamin since 2004. The, the amount of advantage that they're going to have, the leg up that they're going to have, I would question if those kids could even ever catch them. I know. I know. It's wild. It's just it's such a cool this is a cool thing to to watch. And that group is like my favorite thing I have on the, on the internet. Is like seeing people how they've changed their lives. It's unbelievable. It's the coolest thing ever. And a lot of it's like before and after pictures of losing weight and all that. But like every caption you read, the first thing they say is this has nothing to do. If you could only see the the changes in my mind, and I know my the body thing and the physical stuff looks really cool. But man, if you could if you could just you know take a X ray or a scan of somebody's brain and see how much it changes them, it's like it's. It's, it's just priceless. It's just the coolest thing. And I wish we could get everyone in the world to do yeah. it. But yeah. if, if, and, and so many people ask me, like, how did you achieve your mindset? How did you, how did you get to where you're at? It's like, if you really want to, to go there, do 75 hard. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to experience, and, and again, like people romanticize mindsets, people romanticize motivation. Mo well, they look at David Goggins, they look at Andy, they look at uh, Jocko and, you know, they see these mindsets and they like, they yearn for them so much. But like the amount of work that they had to put in to achieve that mindset, mm -hmm. it makes you, it, it, if you, if you knew what they actually went through to achieve it. You wouldn't want it anymore. And continue to go because it's a perishable skill. It's something that people don't understand. You don't just complete 75 hard, you know, drop 20, 30, whatever pounds, get a six pack, and then like you're good. Like, great. Let's go cruise now. No, 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 no. That, ha that has to be maintained. Like you have to continue to put in the work, the mental work, the physical work, the all of it. Otherwise it's gone. You wake up three months later and you're back to where you were. Like yeah, this is it's exactly... a perishable skill. You have to continue to do it. So yeah, the Jockos, the Andes, like they're crushing life, but they still put in the work every single day. Jocko wakes up every single day at four, 4.30 in the morning and gets to work. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he didn't just get, he wasn't born like this. Like he worked hard to be where he is and he continues to work that way. Yeah. People think that they're my, they're, they're just wired differently and David Goggins is a perfect example of somebody that was that, that is wired just like all of us, mm -hmm. but has put in the reps and put in the work to to completely change who he is. I'm slightly convinced David Goggins might be part alien, but that's up for debate. But he's not though. <laughs> he's not though because he's he, unbelievable. He's the, he he's, was a, he was he was fat. He was lazy. He had the same mindset that everyone else does, and he he's just a perfect example of like you know you could you could look at michael jordan and say that that guy was different you could look at kobe bryant and say that guy was different but you can't look at david goggins and say that that guy was different mm -hmm. because he was exactly like you he was exactly like me but he put in the work to he had change every everything. disadvantage in the book every single one every single you name one. it he was abused as a kid broken family um, stepdad murdered, stepdad murdered, witnessed murders as a kid, overweight, bullied, couldn't read, failing school, racism, all, all, all of it. it, all of it. He had, you check off every box that the world likes to float, float around these days. And he had it. And if you see where that man is now, it's like, it's just, it's impossible to make up an excuse knowing that they are Jocko willing, Jocko, Jocko, David Goggins. And if you don't know who David Goggins is, like read his book, can't hurt me. It's unbelievable. And learn, learn his story. He's He's unreal. He's a yep. game changer. Yeah, that's sure. why that's why he's so he's he's 
That's why he is where he's at. Not only is he the most insane, most extreme version of this, but you, you, you see that, like you said, he had all the disadvantages. He was fat. He had, he had, he was just like you and me, Mm -hmm. just like you and me, just like everyone else that we talk about who think that they're not going to amount to anything, who've already accepted their reality who think that guys like David Goggins are wired differently than them and they're just destined for something else. He was that guy. And he changed that. He put in the work. He did everything that was required of him. And um, and you can do the exact same thing. You can do the exact same thing. And I, and I highly recommend with starting with 75 hard because people ask me, like, I don't know where to start. Here's where to start. Do two, do two 45-minute workouts every single day. Drink a gallon of water. Take a progress photo every day. Don't have any alcohol for 75 days and pick a diet and stick to it for 75 days. Do that, and I guarantee your life will change. Hey 